I think they expect me to preach here in trouble. this morning that God loves you and so do I. Our opening hymn this morning is number 145, Morning is Broken. be seated. Join with the call to worship. Lead a life worthy of calling to which you are called. We, we cannot, cannot do this alone. We dare not try this alone. We gather for God's people. Lead a life worthy of your calling, a life filled with service and with love. We come to build Lead a life worthy of your calling, the life of peace grounded in the Spirit. We rejoice in our oneness in Christ. We will share the grace offered to us. Lead a life which reflects your calling to which you have been called. We gather today as God's family. <clears throat> we have any joys or concerns this morning? Yes, ma'am, Barb. Okay. 
Okay, pray for the upcoming hurricane for the people that are in its path. The people also in Afghanistan and, and Haiti, I think, this morning. We need to continue with them in our prayers. Bill? For those who didn't hear, my husband's been going through depression, and he, for the first time in the last three months, he feels himself again, and we're really happy about that. Roger. Good morning. I do want to mention that those that are praying about those at Hurricane Ida coming in, it's exactly 16 years ago today that Hurricane Katrina hit, exactly the same place. So. And a lot of us uh, got to experience what that was like down there afterwards. So we want to keep them in our prayers. Uh, we also want to keep the uh, St. John's United Church of Christ in our prayers. Um, Laura's son Gabe is sick, and he's being tested for COVID today, and so they called off church today, uh, not knowing what's going on there. So we want to continue to keep them in our prayers. Is there anybody else that has any joys or concerns this morning? If not, let's go to God in prayer. Father, you have always taken care of us, and you always will. You give us what we need each day and prepare us for our tomorrow. Our faith is growing. Thank you for our daily joy that draws us to worship when sadness comes. Thank you for your healing that soothes the day's aches and pains. Thank you for your perfect love that soaks away our fear, your tender daily care, and every area of need draws us to our knees in worship. Thank you for walking with us day by day. In our growing friendship, you have never failed us. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Now help us to remember the prayer that our son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you join me in our next hymn, Lord Divine, All Love Excelling, Love Divine, All Love Excelling, number 384, please.
I forgot to ask about any announcements this morning. I would like to remind everybody that next Sunday we're going to have a sing-along. We're going to sing your favorites, and if there's anyone who would like to sing a special song and, and uh, for the rest of us, we would welcome you. If you have a friend from outside the church you would like to invite to come in and sing for us, that would be wonderful. I think it's going to be an exciting Sunday. <clears throat> Our scripture reading this morning, the first one comes from Jeremiah, the 16th chapter. Therefore, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when it shall no longer be said, as the Lord lives who brought the people of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives who brought the people of Israel up and out of the land of north and out of the lands where he had driven them. For I will bring them back to their own land, and I gave to their ancestors, that I gave to their ancestors. I am now sending for many fishermen, says the Lord, and they shall catch them. And afterward I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them for every mountain and every hill and out of the cliffs of the rocks. Would you please stand for our <coughs> scripture reading, please? It comes from Mark, first chapter. After, now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus calls the disciples. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went a little further, he saw, the son, saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I don't know what Before I forget, glad to see our friends. Gwen and Grayling here came out to visit us today, so glad to have them here. Some of you got to go to Israel with them. Mike can tell you stories. Anyway. I like fishing. I might not be good at it, but I like it. Some of you are almost professionals, like Mike Wheeler. I've told several people that I only go after the dumb fish. When I went fishing this Tuesday, the fish were all way too smart. So we didn't catch anything. But neither did anybody else, so I, I felt like I was in good company. Today's scripture is about fishing and fishermen. I read once that religion is sitting in church and thinking about fishing. Christianity is about going fishing and thinking about your relationship with God. In today's gospel, we have an encounter with Jesus, and Jesus is just now beginning his public ministry in this part of the gospel. He comes into Galilee. He's passing along the north side of the Sea of Galilee to the town of Capernaum. Many of you have been there. And he calls these fishermen to become fishers of men. Now think about the technique that Jesus used. The text says, He saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Can you feel an urgency, a conviction that these men might have had? Or do you feel their questioning of what's going on? Why is this guy talking to me? When Jesus called these fishermen, the story could have been vastly different. They could have scratched their heads. They could have discussed the pros and cons. They could have talked to their families, their neighbors. Could have looked it up on Facebook to see what he's doing. I don't know. They could have told Jesus, let us think about it a while. 
maybe something better is going to come along. You know, we didn't make it to rabbi school, and this fishing thing's been pretty good to us. Maybe a big school of fish is going to come by, and we're going to be busy. Maybe our wives are not going to let us leave. Maybe our friends are going to make fun of us for leaving our jobs, our homes, and our families to follow this guy around, traveling around the country, and he's preaching. And that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. But when Jesus called these fishermen, there was none of the above. They didn't question his call. They didn't think about it. They didn't consult their families as far as we can tell. They didn't see if anything better would come along. They followed him. When Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, encounters us today to follow him and let us be Lord of our lives, he really doesn't want us to think about it very long. He doesn't want us to weigh it, to study it, to look at it on Instagram. He doesn't want us to talk to our family and friends very much, to wait to see if something better is going to come along or the situation we find ourselves going to improve. When Jesus calls us, there's that sense of urgency. There's a sense that Jesus is erupting into our lives with such a strong force that we have no choice but to decide now, not tomorrow or the next day, but now when he encounters us. With his presence in us, we have him beside us to encourage us in our decision. There's a story of a group of people standing outside a very large, ornate cathedral in Europe, and I love cathedrals. And they were admiring the fine craftsmanship and how this could be built so many years ago without the tools we have today, and all the detail that they could see and all the carvings. And it was evident that it was a place to worship a loving God. One of the men in the group turned to the other guy and said, why can't we build something like this today? Why can't we build with such pride, with such craftsmanship? And the other man said, well, the difference is they had convictions. We have opinions. I think that's true. Sometimes our, the convictions, the integrity an early Christian had for God sometimes doesn't happen today. A lot of people have opinions that they believe in God when it's convenient and when there's nothing better to do such as a ball game or going camping. You know the official rule now of the church is a person is a um, consistent churchgoer if he comes to church once a month. It's a lot different than it used to be. There's that conviction that's missing today of giving one's whole self, one's whole life over to him. When Jesus encounters us, he doesn't want our opinions about him. He wants our conviction that he is the Lord of life, that we are his servants, he is the leader, we are followers, his children, and he is a provider. When Jesus calls us, when he encounters us, he does so with a sense of urgency, with a sense of immediacy, with a sense of conviction, with a sense of commitment, with a sense that we need to turn our entire lives over to him. Then notice what he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Having been fishermen, they knew what he was talking about. They knew what being fishers of men would be about that they would go out and catch others for Jesus. They would catch others with that gospel message of love and forgiveness that Jesus was proclaiming. They would share with others the good news that Jesus was sharing with them. And not only does Jesus call us to a life of urgency and conviction, but he calls us to a task. He calls us to a job. He calls us to do something with what he has given us. He calls us to share. He calls us to give to others what has been given to us first, his love, his caring, his forgiveness. There's an old legend that I read about this week. It's kind of crazy about a man who died 
goes to heaven. And just before St. Peter takes him into heaven, he said, St. Peter, could I just have a peek at what hell looks like? So he said, well, I guess so. So he takes him over, he opens up the gateway of hell, and when he looks in, he sees these long tables covered with food. He goes, wow. And then he sees all the multitude come in, and they're, they look like they're starving. They look like skeletons. On each of their arms is a giant fork and a giant spoon. They're like three feet long. And when they sit down at the table, they can't feed themselves. The arms are too long. It misses their mouth every time they try to get the spoon or the fork up to their mouth. It is a living hell. So he goes back to St. Peter. He said, let me into heaven. So St. Peter opens the door, and there's those big long tables again covered with food. And the heavenly host comes in, and they got the giant forks and the giant spoons hooked to their hands. And they sit down. And they start feeding each other. He knew he was in heaven when he saw sharing. A Christian is one who shares with one another. Who knows how to share because he or she has been shared the gospel and has been shared a wonderful life. They've they've received this message that they read from Jesus as they're living their time on earth. And sharing is the call word, the sign that marks the life of a follower of Jesus, sharing our faith, sharing our resources, sharing a part of ourselves with others is what this life is all about as we follow him. Jesus called us to a life of conviction, to a life of urgency, to a life of sharing and a life of proclaiming this good news to others. But who do I share with? Who is the one that I know needs the love of Jesus? Story of a little girl who had a large collection of dolls in her room. I think this might have been my daughter, I'm not sure, because she had a large collection of dolls. And a guest comes into her room one day, and she's got this giant pile of dolls. And she says, do you love your dolls? And she goes, oh, yes. And she goes, which one do you love the most? And she said, well, promise not to laugh if I tell you. And she picks up a ragged doll with missing one arm and one leg and part of the hair gone. Eye kind of doesn't work anymore. And she goes, this is the one. And the visitor said, why? And she said, because if I didn't love this one, nobody would. That's who Jesus wants us to love. The ones in the world that nobody else will love. Jesus calls us to reach out to the lonely, to the hungry, to the sick, to the ones in prison, to the disabled, to the forsaken, to the needy, to all those persons who need to hear that someone else indeed does love them. That someone is us through Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to that time in our service where we would normally have our presentation of our tithes and offerings. Our offering plates are, of course, out in the narthex. Um, If you're watching us online, Please look at the information that you bought on the screen, how you can help support our church and ministry. Darren, would you play our doxology, please? Would you join me in our prayer of dedication that's printed in the bulletin? Generous God, your good gifts to us are too many to name. We have been so blessed 
not so that we might hide away these blessings, but to use them so that the blessings might be multiplied. As we give from our blessing stockpile, help it to multiply and grow. May our gifts empower multiple acts of mercy and compassion, and may your love pour over the world like a flood. If we have buried these gracious blessings, may today be the day we dig them up and put them to work so we might be seen as your faithful servants. Amen. Would you remain standing and join me in our closing hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Her God, number 110. And now may the God of peace and the peace of God be and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen.